Hey YouTube, what's up? It's your boy Sean Austin here from Sean's Rabbit Chain Aquaponic Produce and today we're back with another rabbit farming video. Now today we're going to be discussing something that I like to refer to as the buck factor. Right? Now a lot of people are being drawn into rabbit farming because of the high probability for profitability. And as a result of that, most people tend to place all the emphasis on the prolificacy of your does. You know, people always talk a lot about the does, completely ignoring how vital of a role the buck actually plays in all of this. So, stay tuned. We're going to talk a bit more about this right after the intro. Today, we're going to talk a bit about how the buck directly affects production levels. Now, almost no one talks about the buck. Everyone talks about the does. You hear people talk about does conception rates. You know, how many times she conceived compared to how many times she had been bred. Or if it's a, a batch of does that have been bred at the same time, how many of those does conceived and how many didn't. You hear people talk about litter sizes. You always talk about litter sizes. They want X amount of kids per litter or more, six or more, eight or more. You'll even hear them talk about grow time, offspring, how fast you can grow them out. But the point that most of us miss is that the buck directly affects each and every one of these things, especially in instances of overall low production levels. The buck factor must be entered into the equation. You might be surprised to find that low production may not be the fault of the dough and it may very well be as a result of the buck or box that you use. Okay, so let's take a look at it. Now it's also worth noting that one of the very first and most important investments you should make into your rabbit business is the purchase of a good buck. This is so important because you have to realize that the buck contributes 50% of all the genetics that goes into your future stock. So this is something that you want to make sure that you're starting with a good buck. So guys, no dumpster diving here when it comes to the buck, right? Go out, get yourself a good buck to start off with so that you can ensure that you have good lines going forward. If you're a backyard farmer and you just have a few rabbits, and you're breeding just for hobby or even for personal consumption a missed breeding here and there might seem normal now when you say a missed breeding what we mean is that you bred a doe and she didn't conceive so it's recorded as a miss so at that stage you're going to have to rebreed that doe and go again but if you're into commercial production especially meat production it might be wise to do a semen analysis on your buck every so often to ensure that he has a healthy sperm count or whether he's producing sperm at all. I say that because there are a lot of factors that can affect a buck's sperm count. And it's not uncommon for bucks to experience temporary and sometimes even permanent sterility. So that is something that you definitely want to stay on top of because let's face it, no sperm was no conception, no litters, no nothing. Boom, boom, boom. Now, if for example, you're like us and you do mostly artificial insemination for breeding, it's a lot easier to assign blame to the guilty party or parties. Firstly, when the semen sample is collected from the buck, it's examined under a microscope to ensure the presence of sperm. The average sperm count then guides us on the rate of extension meaning how many does we can inseminate with that one semen extraction and expect good results now if no sperm are present 
for the sperm count is low then that sample is discarded and this is one of the instances where you would have discovered a potential problem buck so you're going to be paying attention to his future samples to decide whether or not to continue using said buck now if the sperm count is good and let's say for example you inseminated eight doses but only seven conceived then in this case you might have identified a potential problem though she will then be monitored for her next breeding now if she fails to conceive a second time around then she's removed from the breeding list and call now this might seem harsh to some of you but by removing problem those from your herd early on saves you a lot of time effort and money in the long run and i think i said this before to a lot of you guys we don't have time to waste it's either you're producing or you're a drain on resources which is why in most cases we choose to call and move on just some for you guys to think about mm -hmm. Now, you may have noted that in my last example there, I used the word conceive and not kindle. I said that you bred eight doors and seven doors conceived. That's because from day 10 to 14 after breeding, we palpate our doors to confirm pregnancy. And any doe that would have missed is immediately rebred. Now it still amazes me to hear farmers who say they're into commercial production and at the same time saying they don't palpate or they can't palpate. So you're into commercial production and you're breeding those and you're sitting and waiting approximately 32 days to find out whether or not they conceive. <laughs> Come on guys, if you're into commercial production, you must palpate because time is money. And I think I explained all of that in our video on palpating those. Right, so if you haven't seen that video, you should definitely go and check that out. I'll leave a link in the description below. So coming back to the breeding now, where we would have discovered a potential problem buck and by breeding several does at the same time from one buck we would have found a potential problem doe now this process of elimination is vital even more so as your numbers increase because you're into commercial production so you have to do everything within your power to optimize that process now this this guy here is one of our New Zealand white breeding bucks. He was imported out of Florida uh, sometime last year. Really nice buck. Now let's look at a few of the factors that affect your buck's sperm production. Since we already established that his role is a vital one in overall production levels of your rabbit farm. Now most of these factors have been studied extensively and numerous papers have been published and I know most people nowadays don't really read. <laughs> so you know, I'm sure that by putting some of this information in video format it will be more accessible to the masses. Now I've read uh, many of these papers over the years. Uh, one in particular that I read was um, published by uh, an animal scientist out of a university in Italy. Um, his name is Cesare Castellini and they did an uh, extensive study on semen and buck management in rabbit farming. I'll leave a link to that paper in the description below for anyone who is so inclined and would like to go and have a read. But uh, most of the points that they touch on are uh, quite similar to things that we experience right here in Trinidad and Tobago. Uh, the first thing they spoke about was uh, the frequency of use. Now, it's important not to overuse a buck and at the same time not underuse the buck. 
because a correlation was shown between overuse and not enough use. In both, on both extremes, there seems to be a reduction in spoon production and like you, if the box is used too often as well as if it's not used often enough. On average, they said that the best results were achieved with two extractions from each box per week. So if you're doing natural breeding, then we're talking about you're breeding this box twice per week. And when we say breed your box twice per week, we don't mean twice per week with 10 fall-offs each time. I don't know why people go to such extremes. There's absolutely no need to. Let me just put that into perspective for you. When we take one extraction from a box, most times there's enough sperm there that it can be extended to inseminate 10 doses and still have good results, good litter sizes. So there's no need to leave your box in for any unnecessary period of time trying to get five and six fall-offs. It's just unnecessary and overworks the box. However, if you just have a few rabbits and you probably don't need to breed him again in any short period of time, then fine, go for it. But if you're into production and you have 20 or more doses and you're going to be using this guy on a regular basis, then there's no sense in over-utilizing him by leaving him for unnecessarily long periods of time trying to get 4, 5, and 6 fall-offs. It's just not necessary. And the difference that people claim it makes, to me, seems insignificant. Because we do, if we do natural breeding, most times we do one or two fall-offs. And with AI, like I said, the semen is extended to inseminate 8 to 10 doses, and we're still getting an average of 8 kits per litre. So, no one has proven to me that it's necessary to get 4, 5, and 6 follow-ups to improve litter size. The difference is insignificant as far as I am concerned. Okay, another factor that was mentioned, and this is something that we've been practicing for years now. I don't know if I mentioned it in any previous videos, but it's about light. When you're into commercial production, it's always, in fact, studies have shown that rabbits perform better when they get a minimum of 16 hours of daylight. Now, here in Trinidad and Tobago, our average day from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. because we get a lot of sunlight here. So that's an average of 12 hours. So what we did some years ago, probably about five or six years ago, that we installed lights in the rabbit tree and we have them on a timer. So the timer switches them on around 5 p.m. and then switches them off at 10 p.m. at night. So effectively, we have 16 hours of daylight from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. at night. So you're always looking for uh, a 16 day to 8 night ratio. That is the lighting cycle that has shown to have the most influence on how rabbits perform in a high production system. So that's something you guys should think about as well. Installing some lights, putting in a timer so that you can try and produce 16 hours of light rabbits to keep them nice and healthy. Uh, as we're at it, uh, the third thing, oh, don't go, don't, don't run away. The third thing that uh, they mention is age. And this is something that I think here, especially in the Caribbean and Trinidad and Tobago, that most people don't pay a lot of attention to. Right? Sometimes we have some really old box. We know for most breeds, sexual maturity in box starts from around average of five months but personally and like most of the other people that we've spoken to we don't start using our box until he's about seven months of age now in the said study they concluded that the best sperm producing time in our box life is between six and 16 months of age so from six months of age to a year and a half, a year and a half, 
No, that's a little less than a year and a half, 16 months. Okay, they said that is the highest producing sperm period of most bucks. Now, obviously, this will be influenced by other factors as well, but because these tests were done in a controlled environment, and this is the conclusion that they came up with. But, I mean, there's no hard and fast rule, because like I said, other things influence it, because we personally have had bucks as old as three years that we still got good results from, because obviously genetics and a lot of other things, feeding and all of that, are going to influence the health and performance of your animals. But generally speaking, between six months and 16 months are the best and highest producing sperm production years for most bucks. So that is just something I want to take a note of. I mean, if you're doing constant analysis of your box, then obviously you can keep check of his sperm count as, because it's going to gradually decrease with age, as box get older, they produce less sperm, and it's the same with all other animals and humans as well. So, that's something you might want to consider or keep track of when, if you, especially if you're in the commercial world. Now, I mentioned this a little while ago, um, obviously, diet is important, feeding. You know, if you're using a uh, commercial pellet, uh, most commercial pellets are balanced to suit the diet of a rabbit. You, you want to feed that has a minimum of 15% food protein, you know, about 2 or 3% fat in there because all of this, all of these things will influence your rabbit's ability to produce healthy quantities of high quality sperm, which will lead to higher levels of production. Now, obviously you can supplement these feeds with a lot of high quality forages you know, we should have, we have lots of forages grown here and we can grow them year round but the main one that we use is Tritantera which I believe I highlighted in a previous video I think I spoke a lot about it in our video on feeding rabbits right, you can check out that video as well I'll put it in the description below um, let's see yeah so I mean box should obviously be well fed on a quality diet but not to the point where they will become obese because fat bucks are lazy and obviously they won't perform quite well in any high production system but if you're feeding a lot of forages i don't think you should have a problem maintaining a healthy weight on your hand but the last and most important point that i'm going to touch on today concerning your box which is a problem that we experience a lot here in China and Tobago and it's the heat. Now in North America and Europe we know that there are seasons like summer for example when it will get hot but then there are cooler times of the year like winter, spring, autumn. So they will have to deal with it from time to time. But here in the Caribbean, especially in Trinidad and Tobago, it's hot almost year round. Uh, the average temperature here in Trinidad and Tobago is roughly 32 degrees Celsius every day. There are times when it will drop a bit and there are times when it will be even higher than that. Right, I think last year in 2019, at one point in time, we recorded something like 35 degrees Celsius, which was ridiculously hot. So, heat is something that we have to consider because heat tends to directly affect sperm production in box. As a matter of fact, if it gets too hot for too long, box can experience temporary or even permanent sterility and the temporary sterility sometimes can last months and that would severely impact your production if you just have a few bucks so i think it's really important that everything should be done to keep these guys as cool as possible throughout the year as some people have taken it a step further where they are built rooms they have equipped rooms inside their houses with air conditioning where they keep their box 
okay? Now, not everyone will be able to do that, but obviously, you, there are other things you can try, like, you know, raising the roof and your pen, uh, facing your pen in an east-west direction, in the same direction that the wind blows. That's not something that's practical for you. You can look at installing some fans, but the whole idea is to keep these guys as cool as possible to ensure that they continue to produce large amounts of healthy, viable spoon to you to continue your rabbit production. So guys, I'm going to end it off here. I'm going to follow up on this in another video because there are a lot of other things that you should consider. But not just the box, but the dozer as well. And we'll touch on some of those in a subsequent video. So we're going to leave it here for today. And we'll see you guys in the next video. Now, if it's your first time here with us, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Of course, hit that little bell. Smash that bell. So that you'll get notifications whenever we upload new content. Now look out for a brand new aquaponics video coming this Wednesday. Remember every Wednesday it's aquaponics and every Monday it's rabbit farming. So you're going to have another rabbit farming video for you come next Monday. So guys, it was great having you guys here with us. We look forward to seeing you guys in the next video. Thanks again for being with us. Thanks for tuning in. It's your boy Sean Austin. On behalf of my business partner Sean McLean. Signing out.